I lived in a, a very wealthy part of St. Louis, uh, like a, a rich county that was predominantly white. And then they did inner city busing from East St. Louis into oh this. Um, and so I remember being like in elementary school and asking my mom, like, I, I know that we're supposed to believe that that people with different skin colors are the same, but like these, these people are clearly not the same as us. And my mom was like, do not let anybody hear you say that. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and it least, didn't occur uh, to me until years later that I was like, I was kind of on it. <laughs> I was eight or nine, you know? Okay, this is a juicy one because I'm from St. Louis and this lady's from St. Louis. So that's why I'm extra excited about this one because, you know, she, you know, when I was a little girl, we used to have these dirty black people from East St. Louis, which is a pretty rough area, come into my wealthy area of St. Louis to integrate the schools. And then it's like, Okay, so from that point in time, maybe what were you like seven, eight years old, whatever, from that point in time until now, you're at least in your 40s or something around there, at least, you know, 40s, maybe early 50s or something like that. You haven't learned to understand that many of the conditions that create the things that you're judging these people for are just from poverty, as if you can't go to some trailer park and find a whole bunch of hillbilly country bumpkin white folk with a whole bunch of black teeth because they smoking meth all day long who are in and out of jail. Why? Because there's no opportunities around them because they live in a poor environment. You know, again, so it's always so hilarious to see this type of stuff where it's like they associate criminal activity with, you know, black skin. But all you got to do is go to a trailer park. Again, I'm from St. Louis and I can point you to the direction of plenty of poor crime ridden white folk. Your experience with uh, this busing program reminds me of something that Robert Patterson once said. He was the founder of the White Citizens Council in the 1960s. It was set up to fight school integration and residential integration. And uh, he said, uh, the sure cure for integration fever is a stiff dose of Negroes, except he didn't use the word Negro. Oh, Lord. In, in any case, yes, it should be. You see, that's the thing. A stiff dose of blacks really should cure anyone of his illusions about it. And then Jared Taylor thinks because he's talking in a calm and smooth, collected voice that he sounds like Bob Ross, the painter. You know, he's just doing like his racist rants. He's painting. He's, he's painting his men in, in the in the robes and the Klansmen. You know what I'm saying? And lynching somebody after church and the celebration, like, look, look at this beautiful painting of this very crass like activity outside of the church, outside of the tabernacle. But he's like, all you need is a healthy dose of blacks to see what they're all about. But again, OK, well, what about a healthy dose of poor whites or rich white people? Look at, you know, what uh, the top executives of the big banks are doing, have been doing. Look at what the head oil executives are doing. Are any of those people black? Maybe one of them. I don't know who that person may be. So that's a good indication that they're pretty much all white. What about them? arbitrarily raising uh, gas prices, even though they don't need to be as high as they've been. You know, oil prices are dropping for them, but gas prices keep rising for us. That That's white people doing that. How about them? Oh, well, you know, they have suits and ties on, so it's acceptable. And, you know, guys like Jared, he's the type of white guy who's never been around anyone other than other racist white people in his life. You know, why does he feel so insecure? Probably because he's lacking culture, probably because he ain't got no swag, probably because he's just a scared little man. You know, you, get, you put him in a room full of blacks, Latinos or whoever else, even, you know, just more hip white people. Put him in a room where the music's going, everybody's socializing, having a good time, you know, not caring about the color of their skin or maybe, um, you know, if they're heterosexual, homosexual, whatever it is that they identify with. But he would be in there like, oh, 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 I don't know what to do. I, I can't dance. I can't move. I, 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 I've never... Like that, that's really what this is about, you know? So it's always just so funny to watch these people who have absolutely, you know, again, no juice. There's nothing really that enticing about them. They're just plain, you know, just straight plain white bread, straight plain pancakes with no syrup. I think that's probably why you're so frustrated.